Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased that uh, Freddie Mac was recognized uh, by the Asia Society uh, for the work we're doing, so appreciate that very much. Uh, and just, uh, you know, very uh, glad that I'm also uh, chosen to speak here today uh, of some of the things we're doing at Freddie Mac. Um, so the first thing, a little bit of background about myself. I'm actually was born and uh, brought up in Malaysia. Uh, for, for those of you who know, I'm, it was a little city called Johor Bahru, close to Singapore. Um, I came here to go to college in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, no diversity there. <laughs> um, but, you know, those experiences were incredible. And then I moved to the Washington, D.C. area and uh, started my career in consulting with Accenture for around 10 years or so. And then um, when the travel got to me, I decided to join Freddie Mac. I've been there around 15 years, uh, mostly in the finance uh, area, supporting the business uh, on how we bring in loans. Now, so for those of you who don't know Freddie Mac, uh, basically, how many of you guys know about Freddie Mac? Oh, great. All right. So a lot of people get confused, but in, in a nutshell, we're basically a big insurance company and we insure loans. And uh, we've been doing that since 1970. Uh, of course, our big uh, brother or sister is actually uh, Annie Mae. So, um, so we both basically uh, help. And our goal is basically to make sure that we provide affordable uh, loans uh, to all families uh, and to create a home ownership possible for as many people as possible, either through owning a home or through renting. Uh, so we do have, uh, uh, as you can see here, we have a single family, the multi-family business is where we uh, do the renting. Uh, so we provide and, and make uh, loans uh, and uh, put, it, put it on the uh, capital markets uh, to be able to uh, build more and more rental properties too. Um, and then we have our entire investment area. Um, now, speaking a little bit more closer to you know what we hear today, so you can see that you know the aspect of diversity uh, doesn't just uh, go towards um, the development of people, but also you can see the first one is supplier diversity. So we put in a lot of effort uh, to make sure that all of our suppliers, uh, either it's technology suppliers or material suppliers, uh, we have uh, different programs uh, where we, in, in the first one there on supplier diversity, we have programs where we actually um, bring them through a program uh, to get them familiar with our procurement process. Um, and then they get actually registered and, and given um, the, um, the path or the way to actually uh, obtain contracts with Freddie Mac. So that's uh, the uh, supplier diversity. Uh, the diversity workforce. Um, that's the one I'm going to touch on more in a few minutes. And then uh, lastly, we have community outreach too, which uh, uh, sometimes crosses over with uh, diversity workforce, and I'll touch on that in a second too. Uh, so all of this is actually run. We have a dedicated uh, Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, so it's uh, very much a, a focused effort uh, uh, within the company. Um, so as far as uh, within, the, um, uh, within our area, uh, we try to focus on three things. One is embrace, uh, develop, and uh, attract. Um, so the embrace piece is around you know, making sure we foster an inclusive and welcoming culture. Uh, second part here, which is where we invest a lot of time in developing our employees to broaden their skills and uh, also help them to grow professionally. And then lastly, uh, attract. We want to make sure that not only do we attract the, uh, the employees um, to come and work at Freddie Mac, but also make it a destination. Uh, so there's def definitely things that you have to do to make sure that, because if you think about the Washington DC area, uh, unemployment rate is probably around 2%. Uh, so it's very uh, competitive marketplace for an employer. Uh, to, and it's very, very challenging to retain uh, employees because there's always somebody else offering more money. Uh, so, so that's where we come in and then try to bring in programs that um, help people uh, feel like, you know what, I, I, this is home and I want to be here. Um, so let's talk about um, those three again real quick. Um, on the embrace, um, there's a lot of words here. But even within the embrace, you know, what we focus on is uh, trying to have different cultural activities. So you can see that uh, we have our entire May Cultural Heritage Month. 
And we just actually completed that. Uh, we kicked off a, a mentoring circle uh, where um, we have executives uh, sitting down and, um, and spending time and, and having these uh, effective mentoring relationships, which has been very successful. In fact, Susan, who is here, she's actually running that program for us. Um, and Susan, in a day to this, you know, we have went from 30 mentors to over 60 mentors in a year. Uh, so, you know, you can see a lot of people uh, very much engaged in wanting to uh, assist. Even the mentees number also tripled. Um, and so we have over 200 uh, mentees that are now interested in the program due to its success. Um, but a very critical piece, not only in learning more about growing your career, but also um, you know finding a sponsor. Uh, as you know, uh, one of the key, uh, I don't know, a lot of people think that you can work hard and move up. Uh, very often that's not the case. Uh, you always need to also have some sponsorship, right? It's different from mentorship. So that's a whole big topic by itself. Um, but, but these types of activities help, you know, uh, you know, find that sponsor. Um, the uh, second thing we mentioned about we had the Chinese New Year event. Um, you know, if you think about it, we are around six thousand employees, um, and, um, and 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 we actually are very diverse. Um, in fact, thirty percent of our employee base is actually uh, Asian, um, and so it, it becomes very important when you have that many uh, Asians within the company that now we make sure that we are able to. Uh, share our heritage and our culture with the rest of the community um, because y you don't want, because so many people may be coming, uh, taking the Chinese New Year off, and you may be wondering what just happened, or oh, oh, Diwali, a lot of people are taking off for that day, what just happened? So when you have 30% of your employee base uh, Asians, you have a situation where you need to really understand what's happening within that culture uh, or, or that religious holiday. Um, so we do these uh, events so that there's full awareness. Um, and then um, we also, this Embrace piece is also about what we heard about today. It's not just about our employee resource group partnering with the other uh, employee resource groups too. Um, on the DevOps side, and this is where, we, again, I mentioned earlier, we put a lot of emphasis. Um, what we have seen is that we, we um, we've had a lot of programs around, I mentioned mentoring, but then also um, programs to um, help uh, the, uh, especially we are, if you think about it, we are like an IT company. Uh, we, uh, we spend a lot of money because think about all the data that we have. And so our systems uh, to run 11 million loans uh, needs to be upgraded on a constant basis. So we have a lot of people who come uh, from outside the United States who are specializing in uh, IT, PhDs, uh, quantitative, a lot of the data that we deal with is quantitative. So um, what happens is that they are uh, first generation uh, in the United States um, and very often uh, they are very uncomfortable in social settings. So one of the things that we just introduced is basically what we call the American Cultural Awareness Program, which is that um, that's not on here, but, um, but basically uh, what it is is that very often, uh, I was mentioning someone, you say happy hour uh, to folks that are not, you know, born and brought up in the United States, uh, they actually get scared. Uh, <laughs> they are, uh, I got to go home uh, because of this and that. And, and so, wait, you were fine all, until I said happy hour. <laughs> And the reason is because they go to a happy hour and they feel very uncomfortable, right? Because all of a sudden you got the senior vice president there and he's talking about, you know, the next NFL game. And you're like, I have no idea. And then, you know, so, so you have those similar situations, um, even with baseball, or even they may be saying, if you go into a meeting, you got many situations, you know, they'll say, uh, water under the bridge. What did that mean? You know, so you, you, can, you see that every day, right? People are using all these colloquial uh, different terms and you have no idea what they said. So the idea of this program is to actually get people uh, comfortable. So our first kickoff uh, on this event was basically, uh, we had what was called the American Culture uh, Awareness uh, quiz, uh, quiz Show. And it was well attended, we had 120 um, uh, staff attend. And um, so we went through 30 questions uh, using the game Kahoot. 
I don't know if anybody familiar with Kahoot, <laughs> but um, we we talked about you know we have movie clips. Um, so I don't know if many of you know the movie um, A Few Good Men, <laughs> where there's a classic line, right? Uh, you can't handle the truth, right? So we played that. Um, we had the movie Jerry Maguire, you know, where you know Cuba Gooding Jr. goes, you know, show me the money. <laughs> so these things, you know, um, uh, you know, people are originally unfamiliar if you not being brought up in the U.S. Um, so, uh, so this is just the beginning. Uh, our next plan is bringing an NFL player uh, to talk about the rules. Uh, of, uh, you know, why did they throw a red flag? <laughs> why did they just throw a red flag? You know, I have a personal experience myself, actually. When I first came, I went to a baseball game. Um, and I'm sitting going completely lost, right? And all of a sudden, everybody stands up and starts leaving. It's like, oh, shoot, what just happened? I asked the guy next door, hey, what just happened? They're like, hey, dude, you know, game's over. <laughs> that was my personal experience. Uh, and, um, What's interesting is that also, as I mentioned, 30% of our workforce is Asian. There are also people at PhD level now at very senior levels in the company. So I've gone into meetings where they would start, all of a sudden talk about cricket. And I'm going, you know, I knew cricket was played in Malaysia, but I never paid attention. So now they're all energized about talking about cricket. And then I've got, you know, po folks that are born in the US who are going, Oh no. Oh yeah, no. What is he talking about? I know the game goes on for three days. You know? <laughs> but so, what we're going to do is we're bringing somebody in to explain the game of cricket to everyone. Uh, so, it goes both ways, right? It's not just about teaching uh, you know, non US born um, staff about uh, you know, US culture, but it also goes the other way so that everybody you know, now can be freely comfortable about each other's cultures and, and norms. Um, we also have officer and um, board of director uh, fireside chats. Uh, we have actually uh, two of our board members are actually Asian. Uh, Sarah Matthews, um, she's on the board. Uh, she went down in Brad Street, Brad Street. And then also Sai, he was the president of PNC Bank. He was just actually came and actually had a, a really wonderful uh, presentation about his career journey. Uh, coming from Pakistan, uh, very inspiring, right? He, he basically uh, came with nothing uh, and then became president of PNC Bank, right? So that journey of, uh, and in fact, this is the most amazing thing. Uh, he actually was also the president of Harley Davidson. Can you imagine somebody born, you know, in a very poor surrounding in Pakistan, coming to the United States and becoming the president of Harley Davidson motorbikes? <laughs> it's, it's unimaginable, right? But that journey is very inspiring to, to know that there's no barrier uh, if you believe in yourself. Um, and then, uh, so we do the mentoring circles. Oh, accent workshops. We actually are bringing uh, uh, some expert uh, trainers from California to actually help. Because as I said earlier, a lot of our, our folks are very smart, quantitative, um, studied overseas and, and came into the country with a PhD, but if they have to present the materials, they have a hard time, they struggle uh, because of the access. Not because they don't know the content. They know the content inside out, right? They know better than anyone, but being able to present that in a manner that senior executives can and understand and make a decision, that's where they struggle. So we're bringing an accident training workshop. And what's interesting is that not only the first day of training is actually for the staff, the next day is actually for their manager. Because the managers also need to understand you know, where they're coming from when they say something. Uh, you know, and sometimes they may come across as being rude, but they're not. It's just the way they're translating in their head uh, their native language back to English, and it comes off in a you know, wrong way. So we're going to have that training too. Um, and as far as um, further additional growth, um, I, I talked about mentoring. And they also, we also introduce a program called uh, Direct Program. And this is basically um, uh, three different sessions where uh, high potential employees are actually sent through a, a pretty uh, rigorous uh, training and coaching around how to be uh, successful at the next level. 
and, and it goes through um, you know how to create a strategy. I actually was uh, fortunate enough to go through the program, which I still use today. Whenever you're given a, a, a project it, or, or an assignment, a big assignment, I mean, laying out a full a strategy map. Uh, wonderful document. If you've never seen, try to put it on Google. Maybe it's out there. It's called Strategy Map, where you come up with the vision and goals and the objectives and the purpose, and then exactly who, you know who's working on them. Um, the other piece too is very often people forget um, how you present yourself to work every day. Uh, really makes a big difference, um, and, and so we go through that coaching too. Um, but an, an ERG is, is not really, um, you know, at the end of the day, we still need to make money, uh, right? And it's not about, it's not a charity. So um, what we also focus on is um, uh, attract. So one of the areas that we focus on is uh, trying to help um, uh, area communities. So if you think about it, you know, in our business, uh, it's about getting a loan. Uh, in a lot of cultures, um, having debt is bad. Uh, and, and we come in the United States, they have so much cash and they have no credit. Guess what? They try and get a loan, they're like, nope. You have no, your credit score is, is almost next to nothing because they never had a, 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 you know, a loan. Um, so we, we have many programs where we go out in the community uh, not only to educate how to um, obtain uh, credit, what it means to um, protect and maintain your uh, credit score. Um, and then also, uh, a lot of uh, immigrants also come and start a business. And when they start a business, it, it's all, you know, uh, there's no steady income per se. Now how do you try and qualify for a loan? So we try to educate uh, the immigrants. First, you know, maybe they don't even speak English, so we have to get translated. So our ERG has members who actually go out and uh, help with um, and being able to uh, do some type of coaching and training on how to qualify for a mortgage and what, it, what are the important steps. Um, and, um, let's see. And, and one of the new initiatives that we're working on is that, you know, going digi digital, right? So we're trying to now create videos uh, so that if we're now, we all, we all basically mostly located in the Washington DC area. There's only so many people you can touch. So we're starting to create videos uh, that are going to be in Mandarin, um, um, and we're looking at also in Hindi, so many different languages, so that uh, we can have the message out and also on our website, so that it goes through um, you know, responsible lending uh, and also how to um, you know, maintain and protect your credit. Um, so those are the main things I wanted to cover. Um, hopefully, I'm still on time. Again, these are all the outreach uh, groups that we belong to. Uh, and, and so, before I end, you know, I, I think the one uh, you know thing that it was uh, eye opener for me. I, I was actually selected to attend the Ascend. Um, you familiar with Ascend? Great organization. And, um, and I know somebody from the board is here, right? So I definitely need to speak to her. But. Um, you know, I was selected to be, well, first of all, before I go there, I never looked at myself as being Asian. Never. I always went to work and I said, I'm just another employee uh, and I'm just going to do hard work. And then I attended this Ascend uh, Senior, it was called the Corporate Executive Leadership Program, where they talked about all these challenges that Asians have. And, and the number one, which I didn't even recognize was the fact that we are always afraid of authority and you never even have the, uh, you know, the courage to go and speak to your boss and say, you know, I'm doing, I've been doing a really good job. Do you think it's time? Even today, like you can see, I'm almost hesitant to even say those words. I think I deserve a promotion. <laughs> you know, so you're culturally brought to not question authority and then uh, that's when I realized, oh my God, you know, some of the things they were talking about in there was hit, me, hit home really hard, where you have to basically, you know, you gotta work hard, right? You gotta put in the time, but at the same time, if you don't ask, nothing's gonna come to you. So, and it's very hard for Asians who I think work really hard, but then they work hard and they go home thinking that one day my boss is gonna recognize I'm gonna get promoted. 
And that's when I realized. So I actually had my conversation with my boss, and, and it was great because, you know, he was able to understand where I was coming from and, and, and be able to articulate. So that was a big takeaway for me. But then, um, just this year, I was selected to be uh, a co chair of the Asian ERG. And I'm going, oh my God, I didn't even, I wasn't even a member of the Asian ERG. <laughs> You know, I didn't, you heard me, right? I was, I've been with the company for 15 years. I'm not, I was not even part of the Asian ERG. Why? Because I told you, I never, told, I never thought myself to be Asian. Uh, I just went in, hey, another member of the Freddie Mac, you know, that. And I, now I started feeling uncomfortable again. Okay, oh, I'm in charge of the Asian ERG. Oh, I've got to look out for the Asians. You know, it sounded kind of bad. And then, you know, I spoke to one of my mentors and I said, how do I handle this? I feel very uncomfortable. And he said, do you know you are probably the top 10 or 5% of the United States? And it's time for you to give back, to pay it forward. So that's when he kind of finally felt like, okay, this is not about Asian. It's about you know, making sure that once you get to a certain level, uh, you don't have to be a vice president or you don't have to be the CEO to pay it forward. I think you will get to a point in your career that you have to reflect on yourself. It's like, is it all about making money and getting to the next level? It is also about paying it forward. And that's when I realized, oh my God, this is a great opportunity for me to make a difference, especially in the lives of a uh, you know, younger generation that's coming in uh, to the workforce of all the things you've learned over the last 25 years. Um, and it's time that you can make it and, and to be an influencer. So I leave that with you um, as you know, part of my uh, parting words. Of one thing was like a big, uh, you know, uh, epiphany for me. So I hope uh, you found that helpful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Turn it over to Donald. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, we were going to save questions, so oh, after the end, presentation, okay. is that okay, or is it? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I guess we'll have the lessons. So yeah, that's no worries. You'll be the first question. <laughs> uh, I'm Dan Fred, and uh, from Walmart. Thank you, first of all. Uh, thank you, Christine, and uh, thanks the uh, uh, Asian uh, Asia Society and really uh, recognizing the, uh, Walmart as uh, one of the, the best employees in the category of. Uh, community outreach. So my presentation today will be more focused on our community strategy efforts and the results. Uh, I'm a little bit about myself and uh, I uh, grew up in Shanghai, China. So Shanghai is my hometown. Anyone been there before? Oh wow. <laughs> okay. And uh, came to the United States for graduate studies. Uh, you know what? We, every time I think about uh, my um, defining moment uh, for uh, for diversity, and it's really at my very young age in China. And uh, <clears throat> let me share <laughs> share it with you the uh, my personal story. And it's in the middle of uh, Cultural Revolution in China, and uh, the Cultural Revolution is a political chaos in China. I asked for 10 years. And the whole 10 years, so there's no education at all in the country. Of course, there's no college and uh, university. So by in the middle of the Cultural Revolution, so because the, the, the economy situation is so bad, and they cannot, the government cannot afford the jobs for the middle school graduates. So what they do, what they did at that time is they send millions of uh, middle school graduates to the countryside to support themselves. I'm one of those uh, millions of middle, middle school graduates sent to the remote village. In the village, we're just working like a farmer. And uh, at the age of 16 years old, no water, no, no tap water, no uh, electricity. And working seven days a week, there's no weekend at all. And at that time, it's, I suddenly realized, because I grew up in Shanghai. Shanghai is the most developed uh, cities in China. I would never imagine there's a so poor absolute poverty levels in the countryside. So this is my first lessons. 
Really, what most shocked me is not necessarily the poverty itself, the hard work or uh, 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 the fatigues every day over there, but the gaps, economic and the social status gaps existing in the country. From then on, I set up in my mind: when I grow up, I need to do something to contribute to change that kind of situations. For social justice, and by those days, I borrow. Actually,、uh, when I say it's、uh, um, it's a mid school graduate, actually, I didn't finish the graduate、uh, the, the middle schools. The Cultural Revolution started when I finished the seventh grade, so there's a no formal schooling for me after seventh grade. When I was in the countryside, after those、uh, long days of labor. And I borrowed the textbook from seventh grade to twelfth grade, and、uh, self-study it throughout the whole the, through the, throughout the whole those、uh, gaps. And then, when the the country resumed, put an end to the Cultural Revolution, resumed the the college and the、uh, universities. I luckily enough to pass the entrance examinations, get into the college. So this is the. Life lessons I learned. One is、uh, my responsibility to really go beyond what the、uh, situation is put up, put up,、uh, put upon to me, right? And、uh, really don't give up in those adversary situations. Whenever, whenever you set up your mind, you can own your journey. And this is、uh, this lessons I carry it on with me to today. And、uh, so, this is the, the story. I came to United States for graduate studies, and、uh, then I、um, <clears throat> after that I joined Walmart. I started the, with the Walmart's、uh, IT group. So I spent、uh, eight years. With the different uh, various uh, uh, analytics and the programming and、uh, the coding kind of、uh, roles、uh, in IT, then I move over to、uh, to the diversity and the inclusion space when the company established the、uh, office of diversity. So I'm a DNI、uh, <clears throat> professional or practitioner, but my topic today will be more、uh, on the community side of it. I think、uh, okay, that's right. Let me let me start it、uh, with the story of a founder, Sam Walton, and、uh, <clears throat> this is、uh, this picture taken on March seventeenth, nineteen ninety two. At that time,、uh, then President、uh, George W. Bush、uh, came to Bentonville, Arkansas, home office to award the Sam Walton. <clears throat> Was the highest honor. It's a president, president, presidential、uh, medal of freedom. At those days,、uh, Sam Walton is very struggling, and、uh, in his、uh, last days, he cement he cement his strength and stand it up and speak the words you see on the screen. And if we work together, he says, we will lower the cost of living for everyone. We will give the world an opportunity to see what it's like to save and to have a better life. Now, those words eventually were encapsulated into our mission: save people money so they can live better. And those are not just the slogan hang on the wall. And those are this、uh, common purpose that really drives. Everything we do at Walmart, and it's the identity of who we are. Fast forward to today. <clears throat> in the article published in the、uh, it's a McKinsey's Quarterly Magazine, our CEO address the new qualities a future leader need to possess, and also how a business will thrive. In the coming or upcoming、uh, decades, and he addresses uh, those uh, uh, things, and also he believes 
a business sub, uh, exists to really serve society and the community. In the long run, in the long run, so actually the corporate and the societal interest converge. So as a business, as a company, we have to or must strive for three bottom lines, people, planet, and a profit. Company has the obligations to help and to lift up and to solve all the complex the problems and also the challenges we're facing today. And with our common purpose, coupled with the, the guideline and the thought leadership, and we develop our framework for community as a socially responsible <coughs> corporate citizen. Our framework is uh, really address those three critical areas, opportunity, sustainability, and uh, communities. Opportunity is really focusing on the people side of it, right? People side of the equation. And uh, we try to create economic opportunities for our associates, for our customers, and also the stakeholders in the community. And sustainability is really focusing on the planet side of it. And uh, we're driving to make sure to enhance the sustainability in those two areas. One is sustainable operations. That means we need to have programs in place to drive down the emission and also drive down the waste and to make sure we have a right environment and also be the water and the land the stewardship. And the other part is uh, try to improve the sustainable value chains. That means uh, build up a friendly, healthy environment, provide the safe uh, products, and also uh, work dignity. The third community uh, areas really focus on sharing the profit. Sharing the profit with the society we serve and the community we operate. And the strength in the local communities by really uh, supporting the hunger relief, disaster uh, resilience, the inclusive communities, and the veteran and the military family. Now I'm going to kind of share with you some of the initiatives we did last year and, uh, uh, and also the, the outcome of those uh, initiatives. Opportunities, and uh, actually there's another item so I want to add it on uh, to, to this slide is that last year it's uh, 230,000 associates it's a few associates in our stores and the clubs graduated from 200 Walmart academies with the new skills. And uh, <clears throat> it's a part of our commitment. It's a commitment of uh, 2.7, I think it's a $2.7 billion uh, focusing on training and the uh, wage uh, uh, rates. The second part, uh, the second bullet point is the, the 230,000 associates get promoted uh, last year in one year so was the greater responsibility and also the higher pay. And also, women represented 30% in our corporate officer levels and 55% in our overall uh, Walmart U.S. workforce. And the people of color is 21% uh, at the corporate officer levels and 43% in total uh, Walmart U.S. workforce. And also, um, Walmart and the Walmart Foundation so donated $1 million uh, last year so for training the small scale and also middle, uh, middle scale farmers and help them to uh, improve the uh, agriculture technology. And the half of uh, those farmers are women. Under the sustainability side of it, and by the end of uh, 2017, 
70A, the global waste, were removed from the landfill. In 2016, and uh, we announced uh, we'll invest $25 million. It's a five years uh, commitment on the food safety uh, through the blockchain technology. And it started in China. And also, uh, we committed to $200 million of the product produced in the United States. So this is the initiative, initiative to drive the uh, made in US and also drive the uh, job in the country. And uh, also, $38 million, uh, across the committed uh, fertilizer uh, optimization uh, programs. Under the community side of it, last year's uh, Walmart gave $38 million to the, the hurricane, uh, hurricane uh, relief. And then also, our corporate, uh, the giving, total corporate giving in one year reached the 1.5 billion. I believe it's the highest state bonds in the countries. And also last year, so 850 thousand hours and donated, uh, uh, it's volunteered uh, through our associates with our uh, volunteerism always pay program. Now I shift the gear to talk a little bit about the impact to the uh, Asian uh, society, Asian uh, communities and from the talent perspectives. And Walmart is committed to be the employer of choice for everyone. And today, it's uh, one of the most diverse uh, uh, companies in the United States, including 70, 57,000 Asian talent working in our US workforce. And 7% uh, of Asian talent uh, at our uh, corporate officer level. When we say corporate officer, is a VP and above. And also 8% uh, senior management, it's a direct and above. And the 40 Asian managers uh, participated in our uh, formal mentoring programs. Our formal mentoring programs require 77,000 managers to mentor at least the two associates who are not your direct report and who have the different background. And Asian Pacific Association Network APEN, <clears throat> we call it APEN Associate Resource Groups. Sabrina Chen is the chair of our APEN group. Thank you, Sabrina, for your leadership. And uh, they collaborated with the other six, uh, uh, we call it ARG groups, and also the Office of Caucuses groups, and uh, committed to four focus areas. So one is the associate professional development, two is the business support, the third one is uh, the community outreach, and the fourth one is uh, the uh, culture celebration. Uh, the, uh, the last bullet point is uh, really talking about the, in May, Walmart unveiled a new associate uh, education benefit and uh, this program, this benefit really help us to remove the barriers in college enrollment and the college uh, uh, higher uh, education uh, graduation. And uh, we, um, we collaborated with, uh, I think it's uh, the Gilbert Education. And so our associates, a full-time associate, part-time associates so will be able to have the access to quality, um, quality and affordable uh, associate degrees and also the, uh, the uh, bachelor degrees. And only they, the, the contributions uh, associate they're going to pay is just $1 a day. So get them to renew their skills, uh, up their skills uh, along the, uh, the, the career journey. This is the impact on the our, uh, Asian communities and uh, the way we support the uh, Asian community through our supply diversity 
efforts. Last year, we purchased the two billion dollars of product in the from us uh, Asian American owned businesses, and also uh, the API community uh, <coughs> donation and support reached to uh, five hundred thousand in the last year. And also historically, we support the API uh, scholarship programs uh, since two thousand five. We uh, funded over three million dollars uh, through the different uh, organizations uh, like the uh, Asian Pacific American uh, Scholarship Fund and the others. To meet our customers uh, in the Asian communities, we have uh, Asian trade. We have uh, uh, yeah, Asian traded uh, stores across the United States. And our APEN groups uh, provide the business intelligence and uh, the cultural intelligence or cultural, uh, cultural insights so when we select the right product and uh, provide uh, some of the tasting services as well as uh, referral of the uh, Asian American owned businesses to our supply chain. Based upon uh, the the community outreach and the, the global impact. And the Fortune magazine recognized that Walmart as the top 15 companies for the last three years. That's the only companies that get recognized three years in a row. And we know uh, we're going to continue our efforts and the commitment in this space because we firmly <coughs> believe and as a healthy and high-performing company, this is our obligations to help and to support the communities and the societies. You know, the critical change won't happen overnight, but the potential benefits and the stakes are immense. This is my presentation, and thank you for your time.